is to get through the uh, GCE ordinary level examination. We can see in 2019, there were 28.9% school dropouts due to failure of mathematics subject. And these failures can either enter vocational training or world of work. But majority of them enter world of work without any vocational training, formal vocational training or employment skill. Sri Lanka has been committed to provide free compulsory education or respective of their base religion and ethnicity. Although, but the relevance and the quality of the education uh, is questioned. So, in 2007, Sri Lanka introduced competency based education uh, to overcome this problem and named it. Uh, to model the education system to prepare a workforce equipped with adequate skills and knowledge uh, to cater to the um, dynamic world of children. Even though uh, the quality, the, the curriculum, the quality of education and the assessment uh, were challenges. <laughs> So our challenges. So the quality of education mainly relies on the quality of the teaching learning process and in return relies on the readiness of the teachers for the application of the competency-based education in the lower secondary mathematics education in Sri Lanka. So in this research, my main objective is to explore the level of preparation received by the teachers on the application of competence-based education in the teaching learning process of mathematics is really And now this will be done by looking at three specific objectives in service continuous professional development received by teachers in the application of CB in the teaching learning process, free service professional development received by teachers in the application of CB in their teaching learning process, and the systematic monitoring provider in the teaching learning process. So the, my literature review was done under the three uh, main specific objectives. And as my research methodology, I have used the employer quantitative approach. The population is the lower secondary mathematics teachers in Sri Lanka. As my sample, I have chosen 46 mathematics teachers uh, from Western province. And these teachers teach year 10 and 11 classes. And they were chosen from 1A, 1C, and type 2 schools. And a survey, a very structured survey questionnaire was used uh, to collect data. And the data were tabulated and analyzed by using IBM. SPSS statistical analysis version 28. And when we look at the results, the demographic <coughs> information revealed that 65% of the teachers are above 40 years of age. And 72% of the teachers are female teachers, whereas 67% of the teachers have at least 10 years of experience. 24% of the teachers are only trained teachers. 76% of the teachers have a bachelor's degree. Out of the 76%, 37% of the teachers do not have a degree in mathematics. 93% of the teachers teach more than 20 periods of the week. And 57% of the teachers teach classes more than 30 students in a class. When we look at in-service continuous professional development, close to 45% of the teachers sample rarely or never observe other teachers' lesson or they don't discuss other teachers' experiences in real life situation when they plan their activities in the teaching learning process. And but we can see seven close to 75% of the teachers they collaborate with a small group of teachers in planning and 
discussing learning objectives. Then when we look at pre-service professional development received by the teachers, around 25% of the teachers are not happy with the training what they have received and around 27% of the teachers have mentioned that they do not use the training what they receive in their teaching learning process. And we can see around 30% of the teachers do not know how to plan an action research when they encounter a problem in their teaching learning process. The, mo the monitoring, systematic monitoring provided by the authorities when we look at the results, we can see around 50% of the teachers have mentioned that they are not happy with the support or the monitoring uh, given by the authorities and they are not free to discuss any problems in, uh, when they encounter problems in the teaching learning process. Teachers are not, as a discussion, Teachers are not given, and we can see from the results that the teachers are not given adequate training to implement CB in their teaching learning process. Thus, they are not aware of different uh, approaches to enhance their teaching learning process. Also, we can notice that the monitoring and support given by the authorities is also insufficient. And from the results, we can identify that the teachers teach a mean number of 30 periods a week, the mean number of 34 students in a class. Also, it is noticeable that 24% of the teachers are trained teachers, and 40% of the teachers are in their mid-career or late-career stages. So they are not being motivated for continuous professional development. As limitations, uh, my study is limited only to Western province, but it was, uh, I was uh, hoping to take all, uh, they collect data from all nine provinces, but due to the economic crisis and the political instability, it was not possible because the schools were closed for a long time and due to the high cost. And um, 46 teachers have chosen. I, I have taken 46 schools. From each school, I took one teacher. And uh, when, when, I, when it comes to type two schools, type two schools um, have just one mathematics teacher who is teaching across the middle school. So, because of that, I have uh, taken one teacher from each school. And we study after the quantitative method, but uh, mixed method would have been the ideal method. And only one private school was used. That was due to uh, the most of the private schools were functioning on a, a virtual platform at the, this time. My study concludes that there is an urgent need for a comprehensive teacher development program uh, to enhance the knowledge and skills of mathematics teachers in the teaching learning process. It is strongly proposed that every teacher in the country should undergo a strong awareness program to enhance, to make them ready to practice CD in their teaching learning process, and also to establish a mechanism for teachers uh, for a, to engage in for a professional realistic time, keeping in keeping with the international standard. Also to recommend a particular period for the teachers to be allocated for their professional development activities, which will be rewarded periodically. Also, a strong monitoring and evaluation mechanism, which is regular and routine should be implemented. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ross. Your presentation was very universal. And all the three, we have a question. The first common question of situation. Uh, we have a doubt on the scientific technique. Why we choose only the 46 teachers and the uh, scientific technique we use for them? Uh, 46 teachers, I uh, chose because uh, I took only Western province. 
and the three types of schools, type A, B, type C, and type 2 schools, I took the number of teachers in each school, and I, I selected, uh, according to the number, I selected the number of teachers for my sample. So first I selected the number of schools, and then I selected the number of teachers from each school. So any particular you know, sample can be taken as teachers. Uh, first time before the presentation, I had your title and also how to present from starting the into a vision and how to link between your uh, section. Uh, I think it has, I have uh, said about uh, taking the, the, the tools in your uh, development. Thank you very much. It was a very engaging presentation. Uh, for me, I, I was just a little bit uh, confused about the introduction also. I didn't understand the river. And can you explain for us what is exactly competency based education is? Competency based education is uh, it's, uh, it's actually learner centered. Uh, so it's uh, mainly the learner activities being uh, the activities we choose from the real life situation. We are, we are looking at improving the skills. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed the presentation. I have a few questions for you. Along the lines of creating questions for the person you select, the people you select, the kids you serve. Did it say, you know, how did you how did you select those individual teachers within each of the 46 schools? Did you randomly pick them or did you did you build them or how did you choose those individual teachers? Okay. Uh, I actually selected the schools and then from the school I uh, randomly select one teacher, but most of the type two schools they are only one there's only one teacher teacher. So there are I don't have a choice with that teacher. Okay. Um, and then the second question is um, typically these days uh, in all dissertations, I'm assuming this is for dissertation study. Am I correct? Yeah, so typically people in the uh, doctoral students use a theoretical framework in their study. Um, but you didn't mention the theoretical framework. I'm just curious if, if there's a reason why or do you plan on using a theoretical framework to analyze your data? You know, could you speak on that? Uh, that's why I'm asking. Usually, there are there is a theoretical framework to, to use that lens through which we analyze the data. I'm just curious, but it's okay that you didn't use one. Um, but I'm just curious why they would show us not to use one or you did use one, but you didn't. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that was, that's just a question answer. Any question or not? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your presentation also. Uh, I just want to confirm uh, regarding variables. What are the uh, dependent variables? What are the dependent variables? What are the variables that you have mentioned? 
second one i want to say what type of age of users you have selected and either they are from 30 to 40 40 to 50 or 50 to 60 what type of age of the speakers or what are the variables independent variable dependent variable control variables that's the age group? Yes, age group of the teachers as well as what are the variables uh, you have selected to choose them. What are those? Age groups I took, uh, I took from uh, 20 to 30, 20 to 40, 40 to 50 and 50 above, because 60 is the retirement age. Okay, so you have not mentioned different variables uh, regarding dependent and independent variables. So if you didn't mention your very you can mention later on to continue to search for Thank you. Thank you so much. Next example is Anandika Kanan. And the company is the analysis of the mission of premier universities in Malaysia. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anahita. I the title of my research is the analysis of the nature of premier universities in Malaysia. Culture is perceived as the engine that powers the organization, and it can be seen as an influential framework for decision makers to be effective. So, leaders must possess a complete understanding of customs and tradition, historical and philosophical evolution, political. Formal and informal political structure, language, and myth that make up a complete organization. Many research in higher education have found that more than university has a strong culture, which earns them with a reputable status and prestigious. So, considering and understanding organizational culture can reduce the probability of cultural misunderstanding and reduce the struggle and help to promote shared objectives. An overlooking organizational culture can lead to hard results. As you know, the language and the culture of today's universities are centered on normative concepts, such as business sustainability, economic viability, product and service quality, internationalization, and uh, uh, global life. Something that influences business and industry will influence university and policy and government policy plan. So the curriculum of university and the production of graduates should be guided by normative concept and take their way with the demand of the market. So it is critical to continuously evaluate the organizational culture of universities to determine if cultural change that is desirable for university 
permit university managers, faculty associates, and uh, academic staff to expertly manage academic certificates. Why organizational culture is important? With the tough competition that takes place all around the world, especially in the field of education, organizational culture plays an important role. And the foundation of very um, uh, educated societies like US and Japan require investment in higher education. An organizational culture can influence human behavior, human performance, sustainability of organization. It can also affect job satisfaction, employee involvement, and organizational commitment. We have the vision of universities. As you know, you need the mission of university is a public declaration that university used to describe the founding purpose. What are the values of university? And how these values shape the objective and university priority? What are the commitments of university? Commitment to students, commitment to society. And what are the day-to-day -day operational activities and instructional values? So a vision is statement expressed a hope for future reality. And vision declares the actions and commitment that university need to achieve their vision. So the vision and vision of university create university identity. For example, the vision and vision of Oxford University and Harvard College presenting this form, and it's clear that they deserve a new vision. Uh, so the vision and vision of university and also the goal of university culture, university culture and aspiration, whether in university itself or expectations from graduates. The problem is that actually there is a lack of research on the organizational culture of more than universities. And there is and in, in their research is needed to compare the organizational culture in public and private universities to identify the, the, the critical area for the purpose of improvement and development, and also the need of higher education for globalization and internationalization. And past researchers conceptualize organizational culture uh, in some, uh, conceptualize organizational culture and label it in some terms like positive, negative, transformative, innovative, a strong weak. But these researchers perform their research in, in, in business and industrial setting that are concerned with output variables like competitiveness, effectiveness, productivity, sustainability. Totally, the finding of research of organizational culture at business and industrial setting are not applicable to university. That has a single association, bureaucratic administration scholars and uh, policy plan. So university has the exclusive culture that is different with business and industry. And has researchers perform their research from the perspective of staff. They say to have a, a student's view on organizational culture as if the students are not part of the university culture. This research focuses on the student's perspective on organizational culture of two world universities in Malaysia and two world private universities in Malaysia. And uh, this study had attempted to uh, actually explore the validation that exists in the mission of uh, two world universities in Malaysia with the assumption that these variations are unique and particular based on the category of the university, that is public or private. And totally, uh, your type universities have a different class of institution in terms of organizational culture that they set benchmark for other universities. The aim of... Uh, The aim of this study is uh, to center for research to analyze and examine the crucial domain of vision that is vision, goals, and objectives, and strategic direction and intent. Actually, I have done the important uh, I have used uh, this, uh, I have used the uh, organizational option that you see this moment and almost CDI. 
Actually, this is like uh, a theory formulated by Daniel Denison, and uh, it linked the organizational culture and leadership business performance. So it's important to mention here that this instrument has been used by previous researchers and scholars and they validated the value by validity and consulted the validity of the data. What is the nature of this instrument? It's for business and industry. I have been one of the question that it is suitable for university setting. So I have so in this research I just presented uh, the mission that you can see it has three aspects, vision, goals, and objective, strategic direction, and success. And the objective of this study is to understand and examine the similarities and differences between public and private, two borderline public university and two borderline private university, according to the QS study. And because I have uh, uh, reported the instrument, I have done a public study about public universities in Malaysia. And uh, 200 the questions are distributed, 85 data were analyzed, and it shows that it has a high reliability analysis. For the main data collection, I have distributed 2,007 questions uh, between uh, seniors from different faculties. And uh, the sample size determination is the uh, Joe's clinical random sampling of Craigie and Morgan. And uh, 1,440 data were analyzed for this. The so reliability shows the high validity of the instrument. It's the uh, random sampling of Craigie and Morgan data collection for that 1,440 data. As you can see, it's uh, the comparison of public and private university in terms of vision. Uh, you can see that most public and private universities rank one for item 18. It's that 78% of public university students and 60% of private university students believe that the leaders of the university have a long term opinion about university development. And most universities rank two for item A4. That is, sixty-three percent of public university students, sixty-six percent of private university students need that the great vision of university generates excitement and motivation for students. Totally, in terms of vision, most universities, public and private university students, uh, have a positive perspective about university leaders of having a clear uh, direction, goals, and objective for university development and improvement. But the public university students believe that having a long term vision is more important for university development. But private university students believe that having a clear vision is more important for students' life and work. So today, there is a question that how students should know the vision and the vision of university. Definitely, to the left side of the university, they can attend their orientation session and the events that are organized for the students, and also they can have a uh, told with a professor and advisor. And most students in most universities believe that the vision and vision of the university and uh, form a uh, motivation and excitement for the students. In terms of goals and objectives, most universities rank one for item B7. That uh, 73 percent of public university students, 56 percent of private university students, believe that university leaders set goals that are ambitious for the US. I don't have time to go through all the items, but totally for goals and objectives, students in public universities have a more positive perspective about university goals and uh, uh, objectives. Maybe the reason is that public universities in this research, private universities have no impact on public universities. In terms of strategy, direction, and intent, uh, public university students rank one for IPC 12. Is that 71% of public university students, 50% of private university students, that they might see? Believe that the university strategy leads other university to change the way they compete in the higher education industry. Private university students rank one for item C11, and the public universities rank two. Is that 71% of public universities? 59% of private universities. 
mean that they are achieving their long term objectives and their vision stated in the university. As we said, we have uh, public universities that have uh, positive the perspective about, about university strategy and direction and uh, intent. And as you can see, both the public universities that have more positive perspective on three aspects of the vision of the university. Uh, the limitation of this study is that this study has been done in just four more time universities in Malaysia, definitely broader sample and generate different understanding. And this study focused on just the students perspective. Definitely having the views of uh, stakeholders, university management, university academic staff can uh, enhance the interaction between the students, stakeholders, management staff, and academic staff. And uh, how did you show this research? Uh, the university managers, academic staff, have the chance to know the perspective of students about the mission of the university. They can form a committee and develop action plan to solve the problem and enhance the student satisfaction. And they should make sure that the vision and mission of the university is achievable, is measurable, and is motivational. And they should make sure that the students understand and identify their vision and vision of the university. And totally change in organization, organizational culture can lead to organizations. Thank you, Dr. Anandita, for your presentation. But I'm very sorry to say that we are a little bit confused uh, from this topic. Uh, we did the topic analysis of mission of people universities in Malaysia. Yes. So, first, we are confused that we are the people universities of Malaysia or we are taking the world universities and we are doing the we have conducted this research between two government public universities in Malaysia, high ranking, uh, according to QS ranking. That uh, should I mention the name of the universities? We are looking for the public universities. I took a look at the topic of the study. It was like a comparative study, like the two world universities and the universities of Malaysia. Yeah, private and public universities. Ah, so the first edition is within your title of the research. Because the title of this study is not really about your objective and your team. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want uh, one question. Uh, how do you see the spread down? 2007. According to the table of random sampling of Gregory and Morgan, that was uh, based on the population of the So this 2,000 person have received 1,440 analyzed. Analyzed? Yes. How uh, You said you have at the symbol side 1,440. But imagine the maximum symbol size is 380. Yeah, I think 380 is 1,000. Thank you. Great job. Your presentation was very clear. You had a balance of visual and wearables. Was very engaging. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, I am very presentation. Interesting. Uh, but I have a question. I need to talk about the vision. So I have not seen any students of this, but this is the first time I'm doing this study. But uh, what happened that the uh, vision of a university is always not uh, it's always doing a little bit of change. Uh, as time goes by. So, uh, you did mention about organizational culture. What's your focus? 
And you say that if your presentation that the uh, students of media is not taking into consideration when mission and missions are decided, right? Yeah. My yeah. yeah. So I had to find out whether to do any sort of uh, study to find out whether uh, students of media has been taken into consideration before the mission and the mission was decided by any of these universities. Because they might have done the mission analysis. And then based on the mission analysis, they would have come up with a mission to the mission. So was there any uh, sort of findings of the, uh, when you talk to people or uh, the university people that the students of the was taken, or are you just uh, making less answer? Those findings that in a research of finding from the perspective of students that they analyze the organization of culture based on students' perspective, but from the management staff and especially the academic staffs. You say that they did not make a civilian opinion. No, I'm not Okay. Another question I just want to ask you is concerning the Denison's instrument that you mentioned just now. Yes, and I forgot to mention the theory that I have used in this study is the change theory and organizational culture theory. Okay, uh, my question is not theory, but when I look at the Denison's instrumental model, that's the one that you were mentioning. There is one part that talks about adaptability. Yes. I think adaptability is something that you should actually consider uh, knowing the addition and provision of the university's change and then they can add as time goes by. It is not just uh, based on initiative, but the adaptability is also something very important. I mean, I'm just suggesting that you should take into consideration because you see, last time when you have COVID, nobody was thinking of online learning, but now, you also have to include that because you know that is something that is changing, time is changing, and then business and vision will change uh, because of adaptability. So I think you should consider that uh, if you are studying this. Yes, maybe connected my data and work in my article because totally I work on the whole organizational culture, but in this paper, I just present the vision part. Thank you so much for the uh, Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you so much. Also, um, there are studies now in the States. Uh, every university actually does students do this. And they want to know how the students are feeling like they belong in their respective universities. So every university across America does this now. Particularly, know the names of these different studies, but I know they are being done. I know my university does it every year. So, this is, I mean, if you want, I can find out what those studies are so that we can add it to the literature group. Because I think that would be, that would make your study a lot stronger if you, if you just say the mission statements are not being, are, are not including students' voices. I think it's a, a blanket statement that is not true. So, uh, I can help you with that. Too. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Shota, Shema, and Hadoki, I will teach you on the nonsense, positive, well-being, migration, and educational outcomes. I do have any question uh, and request to all the audience. If you have any question, then you can note down on your paper and we can discuss with Mrs. Chandra's uh, at the TV. Thank you. My name is I would like to share my literature review on adults and positive well being, migration, and educational outcomes. Actually, this literature examined the influence of the migration and positive well-being of adults. And how migration can affect on 
educational outcome. For a long, literacy was one of the defining issue of the 21st century. So it's a complex phenomenon that has been studied from a variety of um, from the variety of uh, perspective. So there are potential risk association with migration for adolescents. Uh, and also migration for this individual bring beneficial component to the economy and social life of every country. So, according to recent uh, research, migration can have a positive impact on adolescent well-being. But in the most research, they will be focused on only the negative part of the migration. So, uh, when I was working in Iran as a counselor, most of my clients asked me questions about the, you know, and they were worried that if we go somewhere or uh, to move to another country, they were worried a lot about the uh, impact of the movie and the you know, children's education. So there are a lot of research about this issue. So the question is how mandatory immigration effectively and how we can see positive in that and reduce it. Negative impact of migration. I would say global migration brings both opportunity and challenges for receiving society. So, what to optimize the outcome of global uh, migration and ensure success? We need to make sure that uh, immigrants are well integrated. So this integration can be measured by looking at psychological development, educational achievement, and how well individual adopt to new culture. Positive well being and educational outcome challenged by multiple stressors they face, such as difficulty in adjusting to a new country and culture, mechanical cooperation, language barriers, inadequate business, and limited access to education and information. So this will you know, the management exciting research and provide an overview of the literature about uh, migration and well-being and educational outcome for immigrants, adolescents since 2009. Outside the challenge faced by migrant adolescents in terms of their learning and educational achievements. So um, the nature of this study involved researching, reading, analyzing, evaluating, and summarizing scholarly uh, literature on the migration of population from both developed and developing countries uh, since 2009. And uh, this is called sampling methods uh, for selected countries that. Uh, to be studied. Migration and educational outcome for adolescents in the middle of country in 2009. Thank you, sir. 
So, one of the countries is Australia. Um, so, this country has been a lot of industry in the region. So, that comes from the language barrier, social or economic disadvantages, and related challenges. And so, we all have to have a sense and something that makes us quickly update the educational achievement of the Asian youth. Canada. In Canada, also, age acculturation process, language barrier, cultural differences, and lack of support and support system that are negatively affecting the educational achievement of the young girls. In Germany, According to their language, actually they face more barrier language in this country and same sense of alienation and isolation in the school setting. Also, now uh, they show that not academic performance between Indian youth, they face discrimination and computer in the school setting, and also educational deprivation and law security achievement. United States also face language barrier and mostly lack of farm The second part is the hard people uh, and they do not in India. There's the fact that the hard people are going to uh, in Canada, immigrants have greater academic results than non immigrant students. And in Germany, large involvement, they you know, they don't involve, they involve in risky behavior. And also, they have success with the school adaptation and to clear relationship. In the United Kingdom, in Canada, the educational opportunity. Uh, actually, the government uh, enhance the educational opportunity for migrants and also giving true attitude and support from children establishing uh, UK school. So, the next part is migration and educational outcome for developing country since 2009. 
So one of the principal cities in Malaysia, I'm going to introduce you to you. People is a multi-people face, you know, printed drugs, discrimination, online and economic in security as a, you know, negative factors that affect on their education outcome. In Turkey, one of the countries that are in studying charity, my friends start finding more likely to drop out of school compared to non-migrants. And also here, they face also language barrier and cultural challenges. And next country is Brazil. Also, we have seen problem here, language barrier, falling behind academically because of the lower income and higher dropout and upsetting them. Right. So, in the concrete parts, um, the fact that the poverty and freedom in Italy was in Malaysia, and uh, government uh, recent, uh, recent years, they tried to improve education for. Also, refugee and migrant groups, and also to provide free education for refugee and migrant in public schools. India and North in Malaysia demonstrate resource fullness and resilience and adaptability. So, I am here increasing the human rate of migrants, in primary and secondary school. In Turkey, also governments have um, improved uh, you know, the uh, the rights of uh, from Turkish government and policymaker and NGO. So, um, if you want to categorize. My kids and adults have not had experience, academic difficulty, and lower academic performance, sense of violation and uh, isolation, discrimination and prejudice, language barrier and cultural differences, and also lack of family and uh, social support, and economic insecurity. So, there is some Way and we can improve the educational outcome of migrants and adolescents. One is called positive learning environment uh, for adolescents by government. They can specialize language instruction, assistance in finding employment, and uh, incentive for higher education, for vision of educational and health resources, and we can also provide access to both formal and informal education. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. The activity was on the informative. Thank you so much. I don't have any question. Thank you very much for the introduction. I like your presentation. Also, the uh, information for us. Uh, but I have a question. Could you please uh, give a brief of the network for uh, information society, uh, information our uh, information resource of the Okay, according to my uh, purpose to find the network. Uh, for using the, you know, the country, the collective countries, uh, as I said, developed country and developing, and uh, those countries were you know, show that uh, they had more, you know, uh, rental migration. So, according to the first sample, I choose those countries, and also for uh, this, you know, I use the Google Explorer or the uh, 
Hermanos, ¿en qué hay para el sentido de que es el país de contacto con el sistema? The methodology you have gives is based on content analysis, right? Of your in-depth knowledge, but it's a little bit about everything from the internet. Thank you for the tools. The next is a little bit of a video. And the topic is examining transmission procedure on the basis of the material to determine the language used to translate Chinese words in English. He still used to tell his professors and audience. It's my great honor to stand here to present my research. I think uh, it is also a very good opportunity for me uh, to have the authentic communication with me. I can start here. My topic is uh, examining translation procedures on the basis of materials. Uh, to determine the translation method used to, determine, to translate in Chinese words into English. The context of my presentation covers the following eight of these. Part one, introduction. In the process of a course history translation, actually completing the meaning of source language is crucial. However, due to the differences in language structure and cultural connotations among different languages, the translation process often faces difficulties and challenges. The translation of the Chinese big words are one such challenge. Big words in Chinese have unique characteristics and cultural connotations. They are translators to flexibly apply English translation method to ensure accurate meanings. So we did the analysis of materials and the deep understanding of translation procedures. Common translation methods used in translating Chinese with big words will be reviewed. How to please your abstract? The purpose of this research is to analyze the translation processes that are adopted when Chinese words are translated into English. The construction of a parallel context is the first step in determining the methods that translators use to deal with the words. The parallel corpus includes both the original Chinese versions and their English translations. In the research, eight translation methods are covered, namely match, match, paraphrase, shared match, implicitation, amplification, grammatical ways, orally, and the option. Uh, it has been brought to uh, attention that grammatical convenience um, is a process that has uh, the potential to be uh, to be regarded as a, a newly recognized uh, uh, approach. The function of this procedure and non procedures uh, is it's called. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, easy, easy for as I further said, in order to determine which ones are the most common acceptable and which are the least widely adopted. The study shed light on methods used to render Chinese words into the English. Talk to you what some previous researchers have claimed. Not all of these words are challenging to interpret. Part three, problem statement. For over 2,000 years, the focus of the translation theory has been in the angel debate between faithful and free translation. Numerous theories and arguments have been put out in the world to identify the ideal translation approach. The translation of a Chinese labor English has been studied by some scholars, and one of the conclusions is that the translation of Chinese labor is very challenging. Is it in the case in the translation of the Chinese language words in a literary works? The author decides to construct a parallel course based on the Chinese literary works to investigate the methods adopted in the translation procedure. Part four of the objectives of the study. First, it is to provide the methods used in the translation of the translated words into English based on the parallel corpus. Second, it is to describe how the study corpus is built and how the samples are analyzed and sorted into groups according to the built translation methods used. Third, it is to evaluate the research methods in light of those of previous researchers and to look closely at how often they are used. Part 5 Transactual for Free Work. Transmission procedures refer to the strategies and methods employed during the process of translating tasks from one language to another. This, uh, these procedures help ensure accurate and effective communication of meaning between languages. Part 6. Research methodology. Establishing a parallel focus is a research method, particularly in the fields of the language research and translation studies. The establishment of a parallel focus involves data collection, processing, and organization. The parallel Chinese English focus that is particularly constructed for this research serves as the basis for the studies of findings. Part 7 Result and Discussion. We have four great examples that match process. Match process is used in the following cases. The lexical form must be kept. Be very close to the original DVD and performing a role that is functionally equivalent to the original. Turn of phrase like this when the translator decides to use an alternative translation for a later in the original text 
without changing the meaning or the function to make it in. It can be controlled in that. Paraphrase the examples are less visible to the originals than meant examples are, but nevertheless, serve the same purpose. As the following table shows, when the author compared the two methods to those of a previous series, it is discovered that most of the methods have previously been offered by other academics. For example, match is very similar to literature translation, equation, analogy, or response. Paraphrase is similar to modulation, substitution, logical derivation, uh, or similarity. It can be concluded that paraphrase examples are less visible to the original than match, uh, match examples are. But that is less serve the same purpose. In addition, the following processes shared match implicitation, amplification, grammatical convenience, borrowing, and donation are all observed to preserve the original function and to provide the comparable meaning in the translation. conclusion. Chinese made words have unique linguistic characteristics and cultural combinations. So it requires translators to first of all apply various translation methods to ensure accurate convenience of a meaning. The researcher constructed the researcher constructed the Chinese English parallel corpus of the words at the basis for the findings of the study. It is a form point. The most often accepted method is much, and the least one they adopt method is the amplification in the translation of the Chinese big words. Contrary to what some previous researchers have claimed, not all big words are challenging to interpret. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Your presentation was engaging and easy to follow. However, I had some um, confusion regarding your research methodology. Can you explain for us the method you have used for conducting study? I mean, the methodology. Yeah, research methodology. Um, I think the methodology used to provide researchers for the establishment of a parallel purpose. In this focus, I will pick up the uh, examples of uh, uh, Chinese big words uh, and to find out uh, the, their translations or the corresponding uh, ones. And I will put uh, the two versions uh, together uh, in this way with the parallel purposes. So, how many mathematics have you examined? Uh, at least uh, 100, yeah, 100 items or the examples uh, are collected from the translatory works to, uh, to, to, to serve the uh, basis for my study. Okay, from my mind, I don't have any more questions. I do Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the next one. Please, how do you?
Next. Good morning, everyone. Today is my great honor to present my paper, the type age of emotional uh, publics and their emotional outcomes. A managed and the treatment of emotion in managed literature. I'm going to cover the following comments introduction, problem statements, objectives, editorial review, uh, research and photography, results, collaboration, and good. A mid-age literature has long been a focus for later critics, but the only recent relationships in the history of emotions taking on a direct shape. It is the world of historians that has had a significant impact on the current critical attitudes for the study of emotions in the past, which in turn has been influenced by research in the fields of sociology, psychology, and linguistics. Uh, in what ways might establish research methods that locate emotion across history is by a new way of approaching uh, the study of the age literature. Uh, this paper argues that current studies of middle age literature pertaining to emotional discourses might potentially benefit from being brought into dialogue with new types of inquiry into the emotions of the past uh, that draw from a variety of academic perspectives. It takes a broad look at the most recent critical development in history of emotions as well as the middle literature. It aims to provide some suggestion for new paths of research that may be pursued by critics of many age labor works and numbers in order to further expand the connection between studied literature and the history of emotion. The problem statement African American women's writings are defined by their contemporary depictions of African American women in light of this reality. Posed by racism. Black people are talking about racism. They themselves are patriarchal and are racist to some extent. According to Aubrey, the black male has got to dominance over the African American women in order to alleviate the bond of the lines that usual systems have created between them. Among other instances, as focus writings show blatant disdain for black women. Uh, I'm sure in the last piece, the color photo, a father's writing brutality to African black women is depicted with just a blame of hope for news of men and women. Uh, we should bring men and women and doubtfully work together. In Tom Morrison works, our male hunters learn to be free from having a childhood tradition, which indicates that in order to be married, one must subjugate another human being. As a writer, Morrison creates a chain of relationships between female and male characters. Uh, Michael uh, offers the view of males as possible supporters for black women's efforts to undermine patriarchy, which is consistent with this view of thought. As a result, this uh, offers the belief that uh, males must find a balance between a personal past and the implementation of criticisms against Ukraine Army. As a result of this process, feminist males have helped to spread the influence of feminist critique and explore new avenues. Uh, the research has studied the works of African American women authors, such as Alice Walker, Tom Morrison, Lauren Lena, uh, Kim Jordan, and Maya Angelou in this context of conversations. African American men and women. When the objectives, number one, it aims to make visible masculinity as a cultural construct, which is based on hierarchical structures of power relations like gender and race. Or two, to include the most recent theoretical contributions on the matter from psychology, sociology, uh, gender and race studies. 
number three, to apply with the right purpose uh, to the analysis of the representation of mass community in the mathematical works. And number four, to provide necessary critical apparatus in order to reconstruct hegemonic mass community by the agent of social inequality and at the same time give light to alternative levels of masculinity, which are being formulated in American literature. And number five, to broaden gender studies by incorporating the increasing dialogue between feminist theory and masculinity studies. Which we do, um, they didn't elaborate to make analysis of the enemies in American literature. They investigated authors such as both for the answer, the sound of Hong Kong, how many young people had a disorder in a world of men. Uh, it's one of the major criticisms such as feminism and historicism. Alfred, a better monograph, gender, fantasy, and realism in American literature, published in 1982, is a fascinating book. Uh, which outlined in English novels written by Henry Tate and William Dean Powell. Philip Pichet, the Could you please skip this part and go to methodology and solve that discussion? And it's a for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 And then text analysis will also be employed to uh, examine how race, class, and sexuality correlate to these adverse masculinity models and the living works. As a result, there are two books for education and business of all major literature. First, by teaching the able literature, teachers. of emotional intelligence and to recognize any standard of emotional intelligence is always set up in a functional problem. Second, the study of male image literature ensures that all emotional technology is built in life. Uh, in people of the new ages, just as it being used on its own. The study of male image literature typically portrays methods and has an emotional process. One of the cognitive process, the chemical emotion. I mean, those are how teachers argue students to practice emotional ethics more purposefully than they usually do. And the final conclusion that the sheer concern and the social purposes of the age of the are highlighted by the physical emotions. Uh, they attach the powers to many of the secular and religious themes in literature. And the increasing amount of these objects, many of these problems provide better insight into revealed emotional expression since they can set and destroy the list of the human language program. As a result of the integration of land studies into the curriculum of gender studies programs, uh, it's now increasing common to investigate the connections between race and ethnic uh, identity and the construction of masculinity. Uh, this is kind of my presentation and for so much for attention. Thank you, Nicola, for your presentation. It was a great presentation for you. I have just a simple question. From where you get an idea to do this research topic? Uh, actually, I am uh, an English teacher at the English Chinese College, and one of the courses I teach is uh, English literature. Uh, so during the teaching process, I uh, find that uh, sometimes the students uh, feel it hard or uh, boring here to learn uh, literature, especially um, English literature. Um, so uh, I just got this idea from my teaching experience. So I want to do that to research. And I want uh, to uh, use, um, uh, use um, some method or approaches uh, to, 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 make, to make the teaching or learning of uh, lecture um, interesting for the students. So that's where I'm going to do this. Thank you. 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 
Uh, for these students, uh, there's uh, two classes, two classes, uh, two class of students. So each class, uh, there are 20 students in each class, and I teach two classes. I just want to say, I really, really enjoy the fact that people are studying race and literature and covering that topic in the American context. Because the United States is absolutely a race obsessed country. We are so race obsessed that everything, all our laws and all our policies have a fundamental basis in racism. So, the simple fact that we're discussing this in our literature is beautiful. Because the whole world needs to know that what you are talking about. So, I just, I just want to say my hat goes off to you for addressing this topic. I'm finished. The one I gave you, eh? That's the one I gave you. Yeah. I hope I'm going to say it. Yes. So, I'm going to be just for the next time. Okay, uh, this is my uh, presentation for the effect of video presentation on achieving the academic performance among ESS students in Malaysia. Okay, uh, here, these are my comments. So, uh, this is my program statement. So, the first one is uh, Malaysian education blueprint uh, from 2030 to 2025. We indicated that 20% of people go and minimum credit or grade C for English in the form of five public examination. Uh, comparable to all level standards. So, as Malaysia got their Malay language everywhere, not only recently they have implemented dual language where they are giving math, science, and English in English language or other in Malay. I come to know because I put my kids in that one because it is dual language. So, now they are coming, they are focusing more on English. And here, in most of the employees, the graduate assume that college are responsible for preparing the students with the information and skill necessary for the future. So that is what uh, most of the employees believe. As I also believe in the same thing because I believe as a teacher we have to bring the students to the future, which is more focus on AI. So where communication is very important. And the uh, inability of Malaysia graduate to communicate in English has generated concern about future employment. So I fail in this one because most of my students are from Malay. So they are not comfortable in English. When I ask them to do the presentation, they are not comfortable in doing the presentation in English because they have taken Malay as a language in study. So that is why they are not, even though they have this knowledge of the Subject, they are not comfortable in doing the presentation because our college is mostly, not mostly, all in English. So that is why they are not comfortable. So this is a statistic I have taken from Ministry of Education where you can see that the where you can see that most of the percentage of unemployment increased because of the communication lacking skills. So this is my problem statement and because of our assessment 
uh, evaluating the communication skill, uh, we have to take a modern approach. So we are following like we are just giving the presentation, which is the they are giving the topic, they are taking somewhere, they are putting in the slides, and they are reading as we are doing now. So we have to change our approach by bringing for bringing them the communication skill. And I prefer video presentation because I have implemented this with my students. So in the first semester, when I have given them their oral presentation, when they cut copy and paste, they feel nervous, like I'm doing now. Even though I'm the literal, I got the nervousness because English is not my mother tongue, it's my second language. So I have a conscious error, I may do some wrong mistakes. So when I have them to do the presentation, they did much better compared to the end. They have uh, confidence level after doing the video presentation because they rectify their own their errors. They change, they look into the way they are doing the presentation, but they improve a lot because I, I have seen this one. When they are a semester, they are not good, but when they finish their course, they are much better and they have the confidence of doing the presentation. So, this is my research objective. So, to evaluate the effect of media presentation in achieving academic performance among ESL students at Lincoln University College. So, these are my questions to analyze the outcome of media presentation on understanding level on the concept, the topic they are doing, and how they are using their creativity level because when they understand the topic, they do more creatively and the communication skill, how they are using. So, these are my research in you. So, as Dr. Nidhi said, skip, I skip you. So, this is my concentric framework. I use this based on the Vygotsky social constructive theory. So, these are my IV and GV. So, I use the uh, quantitative research approach to investigate this one. And I use the uh, Google form questionnaire method. I use five scales and 200 respondents from Lincoln University have chosen only undergraduate students, which includes foundation, diploma, and bachelor's. So I use the uh, tool environment uh, to do the data using SPSS Notify. So these are my results. So from the results of this study, I found students have the confidence of doing communication uh, skills in doing video presentation process because they can improve their language, they can rectify their errors, they can change and they can modify. So that is why they have the given a progress on doing this one. So, um, so video presentation can improve there because when you are doing video presentation, it's not an easy task. They have to know the basic or the depth concept of understanding them topic. So they did well. And this is my conclusion that uh, when doing presentation, they feel anxious, but when doing video presentation, they are more relaxed because they don't have the uh, their physical audience, so they feel they are talking to the mirror, like we are doing it before a presentation. So they feel more comfortable and they understand the topics. So my future, uh, I want to do more research on this because I did questionnaire. I want to do all passive experiment which do uh, with uh, control and uh, and control the uh, people. So that is for you. Thank you. Um, uh, for your incredibly amazing presentation, thank you so much. Uh, just because of the kind of past, I request to all of you please hold on the questions and ask her every time what we play. So this is the time for the Tiki break and take a break for 15 years with you here after 15 years. But the paper present is stay right there for the last few days. Okay, and this is the question I just want to ask her, the evaluated because as a patient, you gave the certificate immediately. For the session, you are not getting so I want to have this question and the voting is not a certificate even from the sheet of the sheet. Yes, okay, very good. Thank you. 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 You <laughs> 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 <laughs
Não? The adults who want to go to tea break, they can go, but for the presenter, they have to sit here to receive their certificate. Okay, attention to all fellows. Uh, uh, well, you can remain go for the tea break, and to all the presenters, please stay around because we have a certification to all of this. Yeah. Can I call them? Can I call them now? Can I call them now? Okay. So I would like to call Virus Fatima Ruzega. This. No trick. Okay. No, no, nothing. Oh. I'm Anamita Ranandu. No one? Yeah. Oh. Oh, there was a hard. Oh, the kitchen was on. Okay, she like a minute. In a curse, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where is it? Shana's shape. I Shana's shape. I Miss Lee Guini. Lee Guini. Yeah, the side line. Miss Lee, how are you? How are you? How are you? Thank you so much. The last sister. I have to go from that side. Last, last, last. Oh, that's the last one. Miss Sheila. Miss Anthony, Sheila, and Mary. The father don't have the option. They get a name from everyone. So that's why they just call me Sheila. Oh, Sheila. Uh, that's why he gave it. Oh. <laughs> yes, so you want to just okay. okay. <laughs> So you like you got okay. Give me something again. Again. Miss Sheila. Miss Sheila. Madam Sheila. And last thing, she nice. Is that ready? Oh, she's a doctor? Yes, she's a doctor. Dr. Shainas. Dr. Shainas. Shainas. Dr. Shainas. Yes. This session is here. Okay. Hurry up. Hurry up. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. We have a last presenter. Fire Sakima. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a short tea break. So please be in the sun for the next second. Thank you.
Practice makes perfect. Asleep. Asleep. Okay. Ready, come back. Is it? Okay. From the conversation day to uh, like. Uh, you mean last conversation? Yes. Share with I don't me. know how to how to and get my number. Yeah. Uh, get my number. Oh, you have it, huh? Last time? You have my, my picture last time, our picture together. Huh? You can get my number. Get yeah, my number send there. Just send to me. I was looking for you. Is it? Yeah. What's your good name, by the way? So last time uh, we went to uh, Raya program, and suddenly you are not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Raya program. <laughs> I need to be famous. Really? <laughs> Okay. Come on, dude. Come on. Can you can have more. Your your god. Your god. Your your six. Go 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 go. Let me oh, go. Oh, oh, oh. Your god. You don't have that. Let me just do it for you. Of course. Oh, yeah. What if I was? Yeah, I want to be famous. Oh, really? Yeah. Go <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. I'll put it. I'm here. Think and think what? Yeah, MC. Yeah, this is the one. This is my name. I'm here. Thank you. Welcome. You can just give you me can a just take a photo down there. Yeah. Down. Come on. Better. Let's do that. Better there. Yeah. Better there. Better there. Better there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
So I think my presentation is coming up next. Can I just go through that real fast? Just remind myself. A lot has happened to me in the last few hours. Yeah, everything is okay. Why don't you put it? Um, yeah, for the most part. I still have some stomach chips. I think I'll be all right. I was getting that. I was getting that. I think it was my idea. 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 I think it
Mary. Mm -hmm. I studied in, in DC for a long time. In DC? Yeah. Where? Howard. At Howard. Really? The white man on campus. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Oh, so, you know, when I said, you know, we are a race obsessed society, of you know exactly what I'm talking about, having lived in D.C. Such a, you know, after after that uh, horrible incident of 9-11, uh, things are just crazy in America. I like the people. No? Seriously, no, I, love, so I love America. It's a beautiful country. Yeah, it is. People are nice, but government... Well, in particular, the Republicans. The, the Democrats aren't really, they're bad, but not as bad as Republicans. Well, you know, like Trump and all that anti-Islam, anti-everything. So many news now. So many news. New liberalism, new conservatism. So many news is just messing with our allowance. It's okay. The world continues. It does. And hopefully Trump will be in jail next two you years. Think so? I hope to God he goes to jail. For that uh, phonographic uh, with the lady? With no, not for that. For the insurrection. For 9 11. Yeah, for uh, the capital. January 6th. That's a coup. That was a coup d'etat. An attempted coup. Is he indicted for that now? He, he has to go to jail for that. No, but is, is he in court? Okay. Not yet, but it's it's it, the grand jury has been pushing in that direction. So. And the election is when? Two more years? Uh, yeah, a year and a half. So hopefully get him before that. Exactly. But exactly. Republican, uh, and especially those his hardcore supporters, they don't see any fault with him. No, they don't. Huh? He's like a saint. Exactly. <laughs> well, he's he's their god. It's kind of it's a cult. Yeah. It's absolutely a cult. Okay. Hi. Much better. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna call upon. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, okay. Oh, so try sit down. Push yes. the sauce. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be involved in the gracious insight for our next session. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Can you help me? Academy. Think now. Being international. Academy. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We would like to invite here on the stage, on the, stage the keynote speaker, Associate Professor Dr. James Cohen, Dean of International Academic Cooperation. Please welcome. Thank you so uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to start off by saying uh, thank you so much for Dr. Rubna for uh, allowing me to uh, present today instead of yesterday morning. Um, as many of you may know, I, I was hospitalized last night 
Um, it was really bad dollars, but everything is agreed now. So I thank God I'm not here. So I want to say thank you very much to Dr. Luca for allowing me to present today instead of yesterday, and also for inviting me to come here today, this week, this week. Um, I also want to say thank you to Chief Pico, my good friend of 30 years, uh, for recommending me to be presented today. I'm going to be talking about this idea of perspectives. Because today, uh, for me, perspectives is really what makes or breaks in a child's education. So, um, this is a picture. Uh, last, or a year ago, maybe, I was able to hike up Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. And as a 54 year old guy at that time, 55 now, so at 54 years old, like, for two years, I, I prepared. I exercised, I swam, I swam, I did as much as I could. And the, the first day was easy, hiking up with spirits. Uh, it was just three hours into the jungle, mountainous jungle, gorgeous. The next day, however, we hiked for 12 hours. And it was, we, needless to say, I thought I was going to die by the time I think I get to the camp because my guides, you know, the people guiding us, literally had to take me by, by my armpits like this and drag me to my tent. It was awful. But the next morning, I woke up, and this is what I saw. I was above the clouds. Now, if any of you know where Chicago is, Chicago is flat. There's no hills. There's no mountains. It's flat. So the clouds are always above us. They're never below us. So the entire time, it took us five and a half days to climb the mountain and a day and a half to come down there. And the entire time that we were above the clouds, I never got this. To me, it was just, it created so much cognitive disequilibrium that I, I it was a beautiful disequilibrium, but I never got this. And the perspective, right? It was all about perspective. How am I doing these clouds? Because it was something that I had never experienced before. If, if, if I ever see clouds like that, it means I'm in an airplane, not walking. So, to get us started this afternoon, I want to ask you some questions. And I really, really want you to think about that, especially now that we're coming to the end of the conference. I want you to be thinking about these questions. How are you creating relationships with your students? And if you're not creating relationships, what barriers keep you from cultivating those relationships? We all know relationships are number one terms of teaching. Are you viewing your students as capable learners? Oh, they can't learn. This person is not smart. Or they can't do it yet, the growth lines. How and what do you learn from your students? Do you think that we're the only one who's giving information, that's giving knowledge? Or can you also learn from your students? How do you try to understand your students' perspectives? This makes or breaks students. And I'll give you some examples. So why start off this presentation with these questions? Because questions unearth unconsidered perspectives. It's through the act of questioning that we learn various perspectives. So what is a perspective? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a culmination of all the things that are in our spect, right? It's the culmination of everything that we have and how we view it's our lens. So look at this river. Beautiful, serene, quiet, tranquil. Calm, not dangerous. <laughs> now, that's one perspective, right? Now, I don't know if you can see that, but if you look a little closer, you can start seeing the eyes, the nose. It's a king and crocodile 
swimming in the water, same river. Now, this is the same river, just a few hundred yards down the road, down the river. This is Iguazu Falls in the, it's, the, this, this, um, it's on the river, Iguazu River, that separates Brazil from Argentina. So here's another perspective, right? You have all these different, three different vantage points. You have on top of the river, then you look more closely into the details, you see little danger, then you look at more data, more into the details, and you see where this river leads you. But now look. This is one of the most beautiful waterfalls in Lips. It's the most beautiful waterfall I've ever seen. Look at the vantage point. You had a serene, calm, quiet river. Then you had the king and crocodile. Then you had this, the waterfall from up on top. And now you step back and you see the whole picture. In order for us to understand anything, we need to have all of those four vantage points. What influences our perspectives? Obviously, our past experiences, our knowledge of the world, our cultures and societies in which we live. It never, it never amazes me when I travel how much I'm influenced by my own culture. Because when I travel, then I see how things are being done somewhere else. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's how we do it in the States. It's not how we do it here, or how they do it here. So I'm, I'm constantly being reminded of how my perspective is influenced, influenced by my culture. Our identities, our positionalities, our biases, even the individualistic versus collectivist societies influences how we do things. I was talking to somebody yesterday. He says, oh, yeah, people are wearing masks. Yeah, two days ago. People are wearing masks to protect the public. And I thought, oh, I thought people were wearing masks to protect themselves. Individualistic versus collective society, right? For pure perspectives. So <laughs> this is a, a phrase. When it comes to perspectives, this is a phrase that I learned when I was getting a doctor many, many years ago. And I went to Arizona State University, 10 years ago, my PhD. And I graduated in 2008. Uh, 2007 or so, 2006. Uh, there was this, this uh, professor from the University of Texas. He came to visit us. And mm -hmm. so, because it's a big research of one institution, uh, my professor invited me and a bunch of other doc students to go out to dinner. So I'm sitting with this, this professor and, and my professor and at the dinner table. And just the night before, I was in a class with my professor. Her name was Sarah. And Sarah was having one of the students in the class was really being really disruptive. And, and I was getting, I was getting you know, annoyed, to be honest. So that, that next night when I was with Sarah, I said, Sarah, why didn't you stop that guy from being so disruptive? And she said, I really try to replace judgment with curiosity. And you know those cartoons with the big light bulb that, you know, the light bulb is shining and that when you learn something new, that, that really changed, it changed the way I interact with my wife my daughter, my friends, my colleagues, students, interact, to change the way I interact with everybody. And so I was presenting at a conference in Chicago, not from Chicago, way area. And a professor from a Loyola University of Chicago invited me to go. And I told her that story to students and participants in the conference, that story. And a woman in the front row raised her hand and said, Dr. Cohen, can I tell you a story? I said, sure. She said, I'm a high school English teacher, this woman said, and I teach uh, English first hour. And every, every day for two weeks, I had a student who was coming late. 
and the student was coming late, was not engaged in classroom activities, and was not doing it homework for two weeks. And she said, after the two weeks, I had it up to Q. I was so angry, I was, I said, no more. So Monday morning, she, this young woman, the, the student, high school kid, secondary school, walks in the door, and the teacher just walks over to the student and starts pointing her finger at the student. You've been coming late for two weeks, you haven't been doing your homework, you haven't been engaged in classroom activities, I've had it up to here, no more. And, and the student literally went like this. She raised her hands like that and said, I'm sorry, Chris. I won't come late anymore. I, I'll do my homework. I just want to let you know that the last two weeks, my mom has been in the hospital. And I've been getting my, my siblings dressed in the morning, getting them their breakfast and getting them off to school. I also want to let you know that my mom died two days ago. There was not a dry eye in the house. In fact, every time I sell, tell the story, I tear up. If she had replaced judgment with curiosity, all she had to do was go out to the student and say, please, I didn't know okay. I know she could come late. I know she you haven't been participating. And yet she did it. She created this false narrative. She created a false story in her mind about this kid that was 100% wrong. In fact, if you think about it, the young woman was doing everything a decent human being should do, right? She was taking, her father was off at the hospital. She was taking care of her siblings. She was still physically coming to school. She couldn't participate much, rightly so, but she was still there. So in terms of perspectives, Think about it. If we replace judgment with curiosity, it changes our perspective. If we can actually inquire, we will understand more fully the four different levels of the, of the river and the waterfall that I was showing you earlier. So in order to fully understand the whole picture, the first thing we have to do is start to realize that we think we know is still somewhat limited. There are many different ways to do something, so we should start to realize that a different perspective might shine a new light on something. Who here, raise your hand if you think you know everything. Thank God, none of you can your head. <laughs> raise your hand if you think you could still learn from somebody, somebody else. Raise your hand if you feel like you're still learning. Yeah, good. Because that means you're a lifelong learner. As educators, we have to be lifelong learners. Second, we should always strive to get as much information as possible before forming a concrete opinion. I just, I love it. I, I used to be on a swim team when I was uh, several years ago. And this guy would come in and he he knew all the bullet points. You know, he would read a newspaper article and he was automatically the master, knowledgeable person of, of this topic. And he would come in and start talking to me. And I would, I would say, Ken, that's so certain. Let's unpack what you're talking about. He would read one article and then think he knows it all about that subject. If any of you understand the way education works, you can't, and all of you do understand the way education works, you can't just read one article. You have to read books and books and books and more articles and more articles and more articles. That's why we have doctoral students reading, having, uh, doing a literature reading. That's why we have, in order for me to publish an article, I have to read, I have to read several articles and books in order to publish my paper, right? It's to demonstrate that we know what we're talking about. So when it comes to the classroom and school policy, whose perspective do we listen to? Do we ever ask, like someone over here who's talking about students' perspectives, do we ever ask, 
what the students respect them from. Rarely. Now, thankfully, in my university, we ask the students' perspectives all the time because we want them to have a sense of belonging. And the administrators in this room, do you ever ask the professors or the instructors' perspectives on this? Or do you just tell them this is the way it's going to work? Does that always work right? Do you always, you just admitted every one of you in this room that you don't know everything. So why not ask your administrators? And you treat the teachers in here, all the professors and instructors, why not ask your students? Because what does that do in the classroom? It provides discussion. It provides a go back and forth. It provides a go between, or not a go between, but an interactive engagement, engaging uh, classroom. Who likes to stand up and just listen or sit down and listen to someone talk like I'm doing right now? It's a little boring, right? So, what can you do as a classroom leader? Meaning, a uh, classroom leader is a teacher. You can obviously make content meaningful and relevant. I remember many years ago, I was doing my, when I was doing my dissertation, I, was, I asked the students, uh, do you know why, they're, why the teacher is teaching this? And of the five kids that I was interviewing and observing that semester, none of them knew why, this, why the teachers, why their respective the teachers were teaching them what they were teaching. They didn't know why. They just had that blind faith that the teacher knew more than they did. So you gotta make it relevant, and you have to teach the students, you have to tell the students why it's important for them to know this. You have to be direct on that. Discipline. Last summer, I had the opportunity to spend several weeks in Tanzania and Kenya on a grant that I wrote with two other professors. And they came, both countries, they came their students to discipline them. If they're late, if they don't do their homework, if they, um, if they misbehave, seriously, if you don't do your homework, maybe you don't understand it. If I beat you, are you going to be able to understand your homework any better? The logic just doesn't, it's not there. So this is what I was talking with the, their teachers about for two weeks while I was in Tanzania. It's very interesting. They, they don't came anymore because they saw the, the, the lack of logic that was there. Testing. Can you limit the amount you teach to the test and replace your instruction with meaningful activities? I know you all have standardized testing, but try to limit the amount of teaching to the test and actually make it relevant to the content. When will your students actually use what they learn from their high stakes tests in their daily and future lives? Never. So try to limit the teaching to the test and focus more on making activities more meaningful. It all pertains to perspectives. It all comes down to perspectives. And that's all I have for you. I went as fast as I could. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to call upon Professor Lucrellen Hatha, the Chief Faculty of Social Sciences, to deliver his appreciation speech. Please welcome. Good evening, everybody. It's been a long time since it's an appreciation speech, can I just say I appreciate your participation for many But seriously speaking, um, all the papers that have been presented, I'm sure it was one. And I always like to think that a conference shouldn't be in a very way it is for your KPI or, or for your CV. Well, it is, it is true, it enables but conference papers should be, for lack of a better word, implemented as much as possible. 
We shouldn't be here just for an academic session. Whatever you write, you must believe it, rather than writing it because I want it for my whatever, fill in the blanks. Yeah. So let's not leave this conference uh, happy with that achievement of yours. And as Professor was mentioning now, we are all like the learners. Uh, you have heard so many papers that have been presented over the last 48 hours. So take what you can from there and apply it to your life in your profession. And uh, I, I, I wish all of you a successful future in your in your profession. All those PhD scholars or PhD students, uh, get your PhD as soon as possible. If you're not solving those problems with your institution, and also when I was a student in America, a lot of people, I think you can take a make it simple, and solve those problems. Okay, guys, bring your attention. This is our first one, and I hope this won't be our last. We will have more conferences in the normal paper. We hope that uh, you sit down and you're interested. You can always participate in it. And for our team speakers from America and from South Africa, one more moment from Malaysia, and they are all here. We thank them for coming on this. Oh, and got sick a little bit. <laughs> Something for you to put in your life, baby. All right. Okay. Uh, whatever shortcomings that we have, on behalf of the committee, I am sorry. But for the committee, especially Dr. Luna and Ati, thank you so much for a successful one. So Dr. Rashi, Professor Rashi, thank you for being an advisor to the committee. And uh, that's and to all of you guys, thank you. To the cameraman, thank you. <laughs> to the hotel, thank you. Everybody, thank you. And, uh, that's it. I'm okay. Thank you, Brandon, for your organization speech. Ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy a short video on the conference chronology.
Ladies and gentlemen, give a big applause for today, yesterday, and today. I see OG Eastern Ministry. Congratulations to the other committee as well as all the participants for joining us for this event. Next, we would like to call upon Dr. Lubna on the stage to give her speech. Please welcome. Good afternoon, so we need to be innovative. This is the main theme of the conference issues, trends, and innovation. So, as a uh, closing, I would like to share with you some information regarding our future plans for this conference. So, we sit here for this mission, Mind Lab. What is Mind Lab? Next. Yes, can use this one. Yeah. Okay. Mind Lab is uh, a center for research excellency, which was established by a group of professors from African University College in 2018. Due to COVID 19, it has to decrease its progress and its activities a little bit, but in the coming future, we are going to restart it again with new brains, new hands, new activities. So I would like to share with you what is my plan. And why my plan? My plan was established to help in achieving the vision and mission of Lincoln University College, which we mentioned that it is to build or to bring Lincoln education worldwide, the education in Lincoln to be global by enhancing life of learning and enhancing entrepreneurship and enhancing resilience. So it's a tool to support our students to achieve better outcome, and this outcome will act led by them. So who are they who have achieved? What is my plan? It's a center of research excellence, as I said, and this is its logo. This is the slogan, slogan, art and science of research. Science doesn't mean only biology or chemistry, science includes even human science. So it includes and involves all the sciences 
and the arts. So it covers all the educational sectors. This is the vision I have my club to be the front, forefront of scientific research training that enhances academic advancements to pursuit of academic excellence and world class standards. And this is the mission and values, sustainability, innovation, and quality that will drive achieving the vision and mission. This is the committee of my club, the flow chart of the founders. And my club has six projects. Going to summarize them in one slide. As these projects, I love research projects. Number one. Number two, data is oil. Number three, helping hand project. Fall is journal forever. Then together we can project and academic project. I love research that many, many the activities aim to conduct a series of lectures to rebuilding the patient into research. Improving, providing information about research and methodologies, research research. Data exploring is mainly related to conducting workshops, training, seminars, and webinars on the statistical programs, tests for different types of analysis. Helping hand project many concerned in supporting the students, supporting the researchers, providing different and various methods of supporting and helping case practice. Journal Forever is maintaining a journal article, a journal for publication, and publishing series of issues and volumes here. This is the objectives. They have already started with one journal and they published in 2018 and 2019. And we have together we can that's towards developing scientific collaboration and cooperation between nations working to international and national collaboration. That's what we are talking about. Academically, it's a project towards scientific research collaboration by the network of scholars that's the link and staff to do collaborative research and publication in highly indexed journals with other staff in other universities, not only their students. So mainly I summarize the six projects for my plan that I am happy to announce that we are going to start it soon under the supervision of our founders who are still alive. Thank you so much. I would like to invite also here and introduce our journal for uh, all the participants, students, and lecturers. This journal is International Journal of Education and Social Science Arts and Community. And has published in the short The coming issue will be in August.
So we are reaching towards the end. I would like to share with you another. Um, okay. Okay, after, before that, I'd like to know. Thank you so much. <laughs> Last one. Before. 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 This is your last one. Yes. Ask them to be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we request all of you to scan this QR to do a feedback for our Faculty of Social Science. You can do it now. It is a way of improvement. We hope you can do the feedback and send it as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lubna. Thank you, Dr. Lubna, on your appreciation uh, speech for just now. Once again, let's continue our event uh, by inviting Professor Zukai, Hatta, and Dr. Lubna to the stage to present a momento appreciation to our Dr. James Cole. Please welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big applause to Dr. James Bowen for the moment of appreciation from ICOG 2023. Thank you so much, James Cohen. These empties never mind. Just, just. Thank you, Thank you Dr. James, so, yeah. Prof, and Dr. Luna kindly remain on the stage. Yes, yes Dr. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Samar, the co chair on the stage, to receive the certificate. Thank you so much, Dr. Samar, for participation, making this event successful. Now, a big applause for Dr. Samar, please. Thank you, Dr. Sahar. Please welcome on the stage Associate Professor Dr. Manuel Selvaraj Baxi to receive the certificate. Dr. Baxi. Thank you, Professor Zhu. Thank you, Dr. Lumna. You may be seated. We are calling upon Dr. Sahar and Dr. Pexi to the stage, please. The next session will be the appreciation certificate to all the committee members. So let's welcome on the stage Associate Professor Dr. Chandra Mohan. Thank 
piece of equipment manual and so on. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Emmanuel Hans. And Dr. Anjali Hans. Please welcome Dr. Anjali Hans to the stage. Thank you, Dr. Vaccine. Please welcome Dr. Shana Shivan. Last thing Thank you, Dr. Sahar. Thank you, Dr. Please be seated. I'm going to be seated. Thank you, Dr. Saha. Thank you, Dr. Bexi. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, calling upon Dr. Kimberly Hans and Dr. Mukunda Ravali Girls to be presented on the stage. And all of all, we are going to be in Satu, you didn't decide that. We took a whole year, you're blunting. You're blunting, 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 Thank you, Dekha. Tiga tiga orang ni. Kemana kan? So aku mungkin tak dengan bibi dia. Tak cuti. Thank you so much, Dr. Manuel, Dr. Mulanda, and Dr. Anthony. Thank you. We're calling them on, Dr. Ingrid Reyes, and Professor Thomas Neely, accompanied by Professor Dr. Shamnas, to deliver the keynote address. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. 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 Thank Let's call upon Ms. Kumilay Sulisalam. Well, Mohana.
Shama. Apa? Miss Shama. Thank you, Dr. Uranus, and Lady, and also Dr. Shanas. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to call upon again Professor Dr. Rashid and Dr. Luna to present the certificate to the posters evaluators. Please welcome. One only, Dr. Akram. Please welcome Dr. Akram on this stage. Dr. Dakir is not here. Dr. Dakir is not here. Dr. Dakir is not here. Thank you, Dr. Akram. Professor Dr. Rashid and Dr. Lubna kindly remain on the stage. Kindly remain on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving with our final session. Calling upon Professor Zubayan Hatta, the Dean, to accompany Dr. Rashid and Dr. Lubna to present the awards to the winners. Please hold on. Are you guys waiting for the winners? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to start on the best poster presenter. Extra ID, please. Yeah. Yeah. Young, young. Please welcome Young Kianli, one zero three. Congratulations. The next video is abstract ID. Okay, thank you. The next winner is abstract ID 011. Chuen Run Yuan. Please welcome. Abstract ID 011. Chuen Run Yuan. Okay, did she have the last? Thanks. We would like to call the best poster presenter, abstract ID 106 Bararashi Absala.
Okay. Yes, uh, 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 yeah. It's not like the That's the bad or the bad that goes to the extra party once you die. Ariki Mashika. Next, that's all we need. The action I need zero, zero, nine. Five is what you want to say, God. Please walk away. Next, we're moving on to the virtual presentation. For the virtual presentation, we don't have the business here, so they are in our own country. So, just when it's on link, the extra ID and the business name. So, the first extra ID is 028 Satya Ray Kumba, number one, number two, 051 Uso Yankira Benedict. And then the last one is Action RD 052 T Crochet. Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a applause for the name of the other way? Can you give a I invite all the presenters to be on the stage for a photograph of Central. The project also we do that with the campaign organization. Yeah, I said it's very
Close, right? Close, 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 close. Oh, it's a good question. Oh, it's a good question. 